It's time for an upgrade. Come on, Vegas! Hey guys, welcome to a series of unboxing videos that I'm putting together over the next couple of months. Now my room's already finished, but before I'd even started and all the boxes came together, I decided to let the camera roll and do some unboxing videos. Something that I enjoy watching and I thought I'd have a crack at doing. So look forward to quite a few unboxing videos over the next few months. Make sure you subscribe, check out my socials. Let's get stuck into it. Hey guys, it's time for an upgrade. The time has finally come where I get to play with some new toys. So here we have in front of us is the Fanatec DD1 setup with a Formula V2 rim and the magnetic pedals, which came as a package. Um, in Australia, um, is it Endor or? Through the Fanatec website, I ordered it on a Friday morning and it was at my doorstep on a Tuesday afternoon with no hustling. I don't think I paid for Express, but that's how quick they were. It was fantastic. So I think they cost was 20, 2300 delivered Australian. So that's not too bad. Um, I had a look at other wheels like the, I think it's a Simu Cube which was roughly, I think it was about 1400 for this. And it was gonna be roughly the same for the Simu Cube, but for the steering wheel, it was gonna be another 1200 to $1,400 for the wheel that I wanted. And it just didn't make sense, an extra $500. And then if I want another wheel, I've gotta go and spend another you know, $1,200 again, where the Fanatec um, architecture, it's about six to seven hundred dollars for a brand new wheel, which is still very expensive. But you're looking at the higher end of the market, and I'm really excited. I can't wait to hook it up to the simulator. As you can see here, I've already uh, dumped the old uh, monitor frame, monitor stand. That was a pain in the butt. That thing. Good for some people, but didn't work in my room. And I've got the new. Um, aluminium profile setup and it's going to be a TR160 frame from uh, Track Racer as well. We'll do another video about that but I want to start this video and talk about where I've come from. My first wheel which has been at the mountain tip for about five years at least. I gave it to my brother's kids for Christmas one year. I don't think it saw the light of day and then they threw it out. Started off I got Logitech and then when the Xbox One came out, I had to upgrade my wheel. Um, no other wheel was compatible with the Xbox One and on the day one release. I wasn't impressed at the time because I paid about 250 I think for the Logitech setup and that was my first rim um, and my first foray into sim racing. It got me away from a uh, controller and it was a revelation. So I actually really liked that room at the time. I didn't know any better, but um, having to spend $1,000 on a wheel, and it just really bugged me, to be honest, especially when I was spending a thousand, this is Australian, a thousand Australian on the day one release Xbox with a couple of games. So I was spending $2,000 to play Forza and I just wasn't impressed, but I was hooked. I had to do sim racing. I just, more and more, I know Forza's not, but as time went on, um, Project Cars came out, and that's when I was absolutely hooked on sim racing. So, the wheel that came with this was the Ferrari 458 wheel, which looks pretty good, but it's been scaled down. So that's not the actual size of the rim. And what I found was, the thumb, where you rest your thumbs in the wheel, has actually been scaled down as well. So when I was driving, I could actually feel it almost pinching the inside of my thumb. It was actually quite uncomfortable to drive. Um, I love the Ferrari logo, that was fantastic. And yeah, the little Manatino switch, which I think worked. And then, um, yeah, the, the engine start was a D-pad and just very basic paddles. And there was uh, two buttons on the back as well. Nothing special. But then I got my Ferrari Formula One rim. Let's see if I can get it off. Yeah, there we go. I'm taking a screw off already. 
So it's a pretty, pretty simple system to hook and unhook as long as you line up the pins properly. Then I've got this rim. This rim I have used every single day since the day that I got it, except for, I think there's, I've only had a couple of holidays in the last six years. This wheel has been used and abused. I have loved, look at that, it's all worn out there. The, the clicker is very much like the real life McLaren one, where it's actually connected, they're not independent. And so what I really liked about it was when you were drinking coffee, you could actually shift the downshift paddle backwards and still go up the gears as you're going down the straight. That was the best thing. But all the buttons is what really attracted me. This thing's like a keyboard. These dials in the middle are just decoration. But these buttons here, you've got a D-pad, D-pad, three switches down here. You've got three buttons, a rotary, a button there, and a rotary here. Same on either side. So yeah, really, really loved this wheel. You know, having so many buttons gives you options to not just modify the car. You're also doing things like um, my, this was my mute, mute all button. So when I started my recordings, I could just quickly just tap a wheel, uh, button on the wheel and mute for the start of my videos. And then um, as soon as I said, good luck everybody, which was my chat button here, uh, that would unmute and you were off and running. It was just standard. You could hear everyone abusing each other. But other things like moving through the menus, um, jumping out of the car, like it's so customizable and it really sucked me in. It really sucked me in. There, you know, I drive the Skippy at the moment pretty much every day. That's, that's my focus car at the moment. And I'm finding that you can't do much on the fly. You can't change brake bias or anything like that. But in a car where you can, all the buttons are there. It's a bloody brilliant wheel. And Thrustmarts has only just updated the wheel itself to a current wheel. It's got a screen and everything. Um, this came out for the T500 RS Thrustmaster. This is the TX, which superseded it because of the Xbox. And that's enough talking about that. Let's have a look at the new toys. So, bye-bye Thrustmaster. You know, one thing I'm not gonna miss is the uh, Thrustmaster software. Thrustmaster software just sucks, absolutely sucks. So we'll start off with the, the podium pedals. No, uh, paddles. Not too bad. I had a quick sneak peek the other day. So when you open it, you get a little brochure with a QR code. Um, the packaging of the Fanatec stuff is far and away better than what I've ever seen. Um, very, very professional. And the marketing team has done a lot towards setting this up for an unboxing video like this. Go and watch Dave Cam's video and the way he opens this wheel and the, the poem that's at the start of it is fantastic. So you, you get your your paddles in the top sleeve. I don't know if you can see that properly. Yeah, just go like that. And yeah, so there's your paddles. Carbon fiber, though. are they made out of actual carbon fiber? I don't think I've touched carbon fiber before. I think they are. Pretty. Very, very nice. And then underneath you get a whole bunch of screws. Silica gel, so the components don't rot, and you also get some tools. So let's have a look at the magnetic switches. That's it there, I have no idea what I'm doing from this point on. So this will be, uh, I'm guessing, this way. So that'll be your clutch, and you've got two paddles. And if I compare it, to what I have right now. I've been trying to get rid of that sound through um, audio filters in OBS for years. It's so noisy, it overtakes everything. Good riddance. Great wheel, but there's some things that I didn't like. So 
Very, very, very quiet. Very, very nice. I'm gonna wrap that up so it doesn't break. There's a little header that'll obviously plug into the wheel. And I'm sure Fanatec's made it easy to upgrade. They've made everything else in the process easy. So that would be the same on the other side. You also get in the little hole here, a couple of Allen keys, just to make your job a little bit easier, but I'll have to tip the box upside down for that. I'll put that away later. So here we go, this is the, the wheel. I'm looking forward to see what this is like side by side, because I haven't checked them out side by side before. I did have a sneak peek the other day. So what have we got? It says at the top, I'm an artist. You won't be able to see it from this camera. I might show it up there. So I'm an artist, three tabs. The track is my canvas on that one there. And the car is my brush. How's that for a presentation? They've um, really put some thought into it. It was a great idea, whoever came up with that. So you start off, you get buttons um, that will replace the buttons on the wheel. Things like uh, indicator, headlight, uh, taco, wipers, move the seat forward and backwards. So if you want to move away from the standard buttons on there, which you can't do on the Thrustmaster, that's a great idea. Some cool stickers. My new, new seat is going to be a fiberglass seat, so new stickers are always welcome. And let's get to the nitty gritty. I showed Kathy the other day, so I have had a sneak peek at the wheel. Found upside down and up. Take these three foam bits off. And it comes in this little bag. How nice is that? The only bag you got with Thrustmaster was clear plastic. <laughs> and there you go. That's the wheel. Beautiful. So it comes with the um, quick release pre-installed. There's a bolt in there. I'm assuming once you take that bolt off, you can use the mechanism. I've never used this before. So this is all very much a learning process. The standard paddles are noisier than the magnetic ones, but Much quieter, much, much quieter. And this is what they look like side by side. I was a bit concerned about the size because I've always felt that the, the Ferrari wheel was a little bit small. Rubbish. But if you look at them side by side, they're roughly the same width. Roughly the same width. But very much narrower. It looks like a carbon fiber plate, which I think is genuine carbon fiber. The feel of it is amazing. So on here, you've got three buttons at the top on either side, some uh, up and down switches in the middle, another button there. Is that a D-pad? Nope, just buttons. And then two little um, thumbsticks, a long and a short one. And then you've got the three dials in the middle, which actually work. This, the middle one doesn't go all the way around. It's just like a windscreen wiper sort of angles. And uh, the ones on the side go all the way around. Xbox button uh, and two menu buttons. So the feel of it is really nice. I really like the feel of it and the way you can, the grooves at the top of the wheel, how you can actually use while you're driving as like a reference, a little bit like on a old phone, how the middle button had a little dot on it because so when you weren't looking, you know, when we used to uh, text and drive and they had physical buttons, you could find that center button and move on from there. The, those two grooves will, they guide you into the, the two outer buttons here straight away. Fantastic. And um, yeah, it feels heavy, I think only because of the quick release, but I think turning wise, it feels very light. And my only gripe about the wheel would be the Alcantara. Um, that's, that was the massive bonus 
of the Ferrari wheel was this rubber. And something that Mick said, he said, that's the best feeling wheel, not so much the best wheel, but the best feel, the rubber, um, I guess over time molds to your hand where I've seen a lot of videos where the Alcantara doesn't mold to your hand, it kind of just rots away. And that's why a lot of people wear gloves. I'm not really a fan of the glove thing when you're not in a real race car, but each to their own. I haven't been into this level of sim racing before, so there's a chance you'll probably see some gloves anytime. <laughs> so if you want to sponsor me for gloves, you know where I am. So yeah, that's that's the two there. That's where I'm coming from, and that's where I'm going to. Really, really interesting stuff. So we'll put that to the side. You can go at the front there. And then we've got this bad boy. Once again, marketing genius. I think absolute marketing genius. Don't mind my uh, my tea towel holding up my phone. Cool thing about the GoPro is you can control the GoPro from your phone. So there's two locks on either side and then you just pull up the lid, which is quite firm. And there you go. There it is right there. I'm not gonna lift it up because it weighs a ton. And this angle, I'll do my shoulder. So basically at the back here, you've got all the ports to plug pedals in um, and other peripherals. Plus you've got USB and the power button as well. This one, people have been bagging it out because it's got a fan in it. Oh no, it's got a fan. The new one's just gonna be passively cooled. Oh, what a revelation. I don't mind a fan. That thing's had a fan for years and never missed a beat. All you gotta do is um, get your leaf blower out every now and then and go get the dust out. And um, yeah, also get a cloth and wipe the fingerprints off it. <laughs> so it's very, very nice. It's got a screen at the front. And the reason I really wanted this setup is because everything's pre-installed, the quick release. Once I take that bolt off, theoretically I should just put the wheel on and we're off and it all knows it knows what it is so yeah looking forward to bolting it in got bolts on the side i think yeah there's mounting bolts on the front as well depending on the kind of mount that you've got i think mine will be mounting from the side so it looks like it's only two bolts want to be tough bolts there you go guys exciting stuff Exciting stuff, really can't wait now. It's just, it's getting very close. Oh, that was one other thing that I saw. You got this foam here, quite quite firm. That foam is there as well. How cool is that? So when in shipping, this thing's not gonna move. It's not gonna budge. So quite confident that I'm just gonna turn this thing on, install the software and away we go. No. So I'm gonna be watching, Will Ford did like an hour's video on all of the Fanatec DD1 software. And I will be watching that with interest to see how we can dial in uh, force feedback that I'm comfortable with. And also learn a lot of the terminology because there's a lot of new stuff here. Thanks for tuning in guys, more stuff to come. Um, this is a little series of all the new toys that I've recently gotten. Um, but I think by the time this one comes out, I'll have done my computer one, my frame one. I've just dismantled my 10 year old frame. Um, this is the wheel one. I'm going to do a pedal one and I'm going to do a GoPro video on my gripes of the GoPro because it's been extremely tedious. And yes, I'm looking at you GoPro and yeah, a couple of other things comparing the, the pedals, how it feels with brand new pedals that's coming after this one. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it. Down if you didn't. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.